Okay, good one for you today. This is Kate's knee. This is an ACL rupture, but it's not any ACL rupture. This one at the moment is not going for surgery. And the reason for that is she's so stable. Background on Kate, she's a skier, she's a great skier. She unfortunately fell over and ruptured her ACL skiing in the season. And she's now going through non-surgical management. Now her ACL, if you look at this knee here, ACL is in here, right? There's the ACL there. In her, it's been chronically damaged. So she was skiing around on a chronically damaged ACL, totally fine, totally stable, strong, just fell over and just did one more little movement there and snapped it, okay? Now, the surgeon says we're not gonna operate on that. She's not convinced that that needs to be operated on because she's so stable. She's got a negative pivot shift test. Yes, there's a little bit of laxity, okay? Because you're gonna have laxity. It's a little bit of five mil translation. She's got a little bit of posterior corner laxity. So this here, she's got a little bit of movement like this, okay? Because the ACL's not there, because the ACL's on an angle, right? It's gonna have a little bit more movement on the posterior lateral corner there like that, which gives her pain. So she has got pain in the back of the knee and she's got a bit of a jamming in the back of the knee and I'm gonna show you why she's got that. But the big thing is we're treating her, and we're sort of fast tracking her through her ACL program because she hasn't had surgery, but she still has to go through all the motions of getting a stable knee again, getting her quads back, getting her hamstrings stronger, getting her glutes going, yada, yada, so she can ski again. And if she keeps going, she stays out of surgery. So for this sort of thing, yes, she has an ACL rupture, but if they're super stable and they can do all the things they need to do without operating, then we don't operate on that. So she's a, not a rare one, but we don't often see that. So for her, what her big thing was is she lost her VMO, like all sort of, almost all ACLs happened as that went, that is coming back. But if you look at this knee here, if you come and look at this, if you squeeze that for me, okay. She's got good quads. You can see that VMO is there, it's great. Look at that quads, that's fantastic. She has a little bit, if I show you, she can extend her knee up, if you just let that relax, sorry. So she squeezes her quads, she can lift her knee up pretty well. You can see the height she can get here, okay? So she's got good height there. Got a really strong VMO there. This one, when she came in, was mush. It was just nothing, it looks like that. She couldn't even fire it. She's now sort of, sort of eight, nine weeks. And so now, if she puts it on, see, she's got it all coming back. Can you see though, it's not as big and toned as this one, all right? And she's missing a little bit of tony. You can see there's a little bit of atrophy going on here. It's not as sort of round as it should be, but she can still get up here, okay, which is great. And that's the big thing is, okay, we want her quads back. But for her, she doesn't have the ACL. So, you know, a lot of people focus on the front when you think she needs hamstrings. And I'm gonna show you another video about her hamstring work that we're getting her doing, her quads that we're doing, and her you know, range of movement, all the stability training that she needs to do at this stage to keep her going forward. Big thing about her though, is without an ACL at the moment, and without that posterior corner pain, she has pain and she has a loss of range. If you look at this, when she goes into flexion, tell me when that hurts. Coming. We've, lo we've loosened her knee up, so she's a bit better. <laughs> when does that come on? Yeah. There. Yeah. So she's sitting at about 135 degrees. Now, the pain's happening in the front, she's got some jamming in the back, which is classic pain through the front. If you look at this one, this is normal. She's got a good 145, absolutely fine, okay? A little bit of creaking in the knee, she's <laughs> all right. But this one here, what I'm getting her doing, or what I'm doing is helping her glide. We sort of got to re-educate that knee a little bit. I need to stretch it out and get some more range through there, but when she comes in, because that ACL, she's not getting enough movement this way, okay? Because the ACL's not there, so the knee's sort of sitting forward. Does that make sense? So when you've got a ruptured ACL, the, the test is, doesn't move forward too much. So when she bends her knee, she's not getting enough movement that way. See that movement there, all right? So she sort of goes up and jams at the back there. So I've got to almost tell her, get her using her hamstrings to pull and do the job. The hamstrings don't just bend the knee and look great, they look after the ACL. They also control a little bit of rotation in the tibia. So we need her hamstrings doing a lot of work to improve this movement. I help her with that. So from here, what we did before, we'll just do that what we did before, Kate. So she's gonna, she's gonna actively bend her knee. So she's gonna try and pull her heel to her bum. I'm gonna glide and be her ACL for her, okay? Meaning, I'm gonna give her that, 
sort of movement of the tibia that she would normally have with an intact ACL. To stop it translating forward, if that makes sense. So where you go again, can we go? So I'm going to push a pressure this way and drive it in there, which helps her, when she bends her knee, helps her brain sort of work out how to keep that in place. And over time, that's going to get better. She can do a little bit of that herself. All right, so when she's at home, going here, she's going to go down sort of distal to that tibial tuberosity. So where that bony point is, she's going to have her hands just below that. Now, what you don't do is just bend the knee with your hands. She's going to bend her knee with her hamstring, so she's got to use her heel. She's going to bring her heel to the back of her leg using her hamstring. She's going to do what I did. She's going to do a downward glide pressure here, which is an AP glide of the tibia. So if you do that for me, put the pressure on, and then she's going to bend her knee. She's going to bring it right down, and she's going to use, and so she has maximum power of the hamstring, right to where that point of pain is on that back of the knee. You got it there? And then she releases. What we're going to see is, what if she does that for a whole week, how does her range improve? Does her range naturally improve because her whole movement mechanics are getting better? She's re-educating that hamstring to move her knee in a certain way because, hey, you've lost your ACL. It takes ages to try and, you know, if your brain is so used to having an ACL there, to try and almost reroute all the movement patterns to have no ACL and get the muscle systems stabilized in the knee more than they are used to. Because they used to have the ligament to require to stabilize, now they don't, so you've got to start getting the body working out a way to try and do that. That's a big part of our job in physio, is to help Kate work out what exercises to do to help re-educate and stabilize, and that takes repeat business, like lots and lots and lots and lots and lots. That's why the rehab for ACLs is so much. But at the end of the day, she's gonna come out hopefully with a knee that is managed non-surgically and is super stable and she's back skiing. If that obviously doesn't improve and she has insecurity problems, sure, down the track she's probably going to get operated on. But we're going to try and help work with the surgeon and not do that because that's what he doesn't want to do. And um, we'll see how our progress goes. So next time, have a look at our exercises. See you then.